the way if you want. Oh. Got it. Cool. All righty. So. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, okay. Huh. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead and get started, folks? I'm Bobby Ulam, and I'm with the Insight Meditation Community of Richmond, as are several others of us on here this morning. We will be hosting the retreat today, uh, a virtual meta retreat, and we'll be led by Bonte Rolola. Thank you, Bonte. Very gracious. Thank you. Thank you for doing this for us today. Um, I don't think there's really anybody on here who doesn't know everything about Bonte, but I'll just hit a couple of things. You know, uh, Bonte has actually been a monastic since 1975. Uh, he originally ordained in Sri Lanka, uh, lived at the uh, Bhavana Society, Bonte G, uh, in the U.S. here from 86 until 2010. And uh, then uh, he had lived previous to that in Sri Lanka for 11 years and practiced in solitary caves and huts, learning the Dhamma and eventually leading retreats. And uh, so currently, Bhante is the director and principal teacher at the Paneshat Lion of Wisdom Meditation Center in Gaithersburg, Maryland. So welcome, everyone. Welcome, Bhante. And it's all yours. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Bob, and the inside community of Richmond for inviting me to uh, share with you this program uh, today. And the subject is on uh, metta and the uh, Brahma Viharas. Now, we know that, you know, metta is the, the more popular uh, uh, subject of the Brahma Viharas, but uh, metta, you know, is only the first. Uh, uh, quality, or you could say emotion, or quality, mental quality, uh, in that the the development of the mind from its conditioned state to the unconditioned state. Now, uh, you know, metta practice is normally amongst meditators. Uh, it's a it's kind of a supporting type of meditation, or sometimes it's a, it's a preliminary meditation for a lot of people before practicing con uh, more specific concentration or mindfulness, uh, vipassana types of meditation. Now, uh, metta practice is one of the most popular forms of meditation in countries like in Sri Lanka. Uh, for the uh, sort of the average uh, types of uh, the Buddhist people there. And metta is, is, is an antidote for ill will. But <clears throat> we're going to be talking more about that later. But uh, the Brahma Viharas in general, are, they are metta, karuna, mudita, and upekka. Uh, these are uh, given in a certain order because they follow, uh, generally speaking, it's easier to follow that order of developing metta first, then going from there into compassion, and from there into uh, gladness or sympathetic joy, and then finally uh, moving, evolving to equanimity. But again, we'll talk more about uh, that later. But, you know, uh, metta is uh, an important part of the mental development. Now, you know, the Buddhist teachings are all centered around the Four Noble Truths of uh, suffering, the cause of suffering, the end of suffering, and the way leading to the end of suffering. And this idea of suffering and the cause of suffering is very, very complex. And it's been, uh, you know, evolving since, uh, you know, beginningless time, you might say, or uh, for many lifetimes. Now, metta is based on understanding. 
And really it comes out of having an understanding about the nature of life and the, the nature of uh, the emotions and, and the nature of, of karma also. So before actually going into metta itself, it's good to have a, an understanding or background of what kind of lies behind it. And so the, you know, the, the, the Buddha had great, you know, loving kindness to metta for all living beings, but it came out of his deep wisdom. And especially, you know, the, uh, about the sansara and the nature of birth and death. Now, people who don't believe in, uh, let's say, past lifetimes, or don't believe in this idea of sansara, they will have more difficulty in developing a genuine uh, deep level of, of metta and also of the other Brahma uh, viharas. Because just thinking, oh, may my enemies be well and happy uh, is not gonna be enough unless you understand why they are your enemy and how that uh, has evolved, uh, you know, over a long period of time. So anyway, the, you know, according to the theory of sansara, these minds have been going through the process of birth and death or taking lifetime, uh, over lifetime, many lifetimes, in different existences, uh, you know, accumulating karma and greed, hatred, and delusion. And this idea that, uh, you know, the, the number of lifetimes we've been going through sansara and collecting uh, the causes of suffering are virtually, you know, infinite. And you know, let's say, just to give some numbers, let's say, uh, you know, millions of uh, lifetimes. These minds have been, uh, you know, going through uh, the, the sansara, collecting, you know, the, accumulating more greed, hatred, and delusion, and getting deeply uh, caught in the web of ego-centered uh, actions and reactions. But anyway, in this long line of uh, rebirths, the Buddha has said that, you know, we've been related to, to everybody uh, in one way or another. And <clears throat> that we've all been each other's mother, father, brother, sister, friend, enemy, and stranger uh, in so many uh, past lifetimes. And so basically, it's like we're all karmically interrelated. Now, you might have your own, <clears throat> of course, you have your own mother and father in this lifetime. Uh, but the Buddha advises us to have that same type of affection uh, that, that a mother would have for her, her own uh, child. Let's say, for you mothers out there, you all know that you know, you had love and affection to your own uh, child you know, in this life. And so the Buddha has us reflect on that in all of our past lives, everyone has been our mother or child uh, in the past life. Now, whether you believe this or not, uh, you know, that's up to you, but the idea is there that if you did believe it, then you would be able to see that, you know, even somebody, a stranger that you don't know now, or even somebody that you don't like, uh, may well have been your mother or child or father uh, in a past uh, lifetime. So that, <clears throat> 
you know, we should try to have this attitude that everybody, you know, in the world has been one time has been our own mother, and we have been the mother to others also. Uh, and this comes to the point of what I mentioned before. If you don't believe in the idea of rebirth, then you're going to have a difficult time uh, grasping this concept. But it, it really forms the underlying uh, kind of uh, motivation for developing metta or loving friendliness uh, toward all beings. The Buddha has said this in the Metta Sutta, that just as a mother would look upon her only child with that tender, uh, loving kindness thoughts, wishing the, the best for that child, not wanting to cause it harm, in the same way that everyone, uh, one should look upon all uh, living beings in that the same uh, manner. So that becomes sort of the, the basis of that. And uh, so that's why understanding the Dhamma is a big help in practicing uh, the metta or to, and also in the, you know, in this idea of the past lives, like even the, the, the enemies, so-called enemies you might have in this life, or let's say maybe not enemies, but let's say, uh, people that you don't get along with, you know, people that, uh, you know, like uh, when you first meet a person, maybe you automatically have some negative uh, feelings about a certain person, or you have positive feelings about a certain uh, person, or very quickly you wind up, you know, some, some people you don't get along with, and other people you do get along with. So uh, within the idea about the karma and so on, uh, the conditions for these also could have been laid down in the previous uh, lifetimes. So the so-called people that we get along with in this life or we like in this life, uh, then uh, we may have uh, had some positive uh, you know, relationship with them in the past. And others that we don't, like or people that rub you the wrong way, irritate you in the wrong way, and so on, then you might have had some uh, negative uh, relationships with them in the past. And these carry over, uh, these karmic connections carry over from lifetime uh, to lifetime. And so anyway, this is a, a kind of a basis for understanding this idea of cultivating metta. Now, Metta comes from the word mitta. So M-I-T-T-A is a Pali word that means of friend. So metta means friendliness. A lot, a lot of times it's called loving kindness. But uh, that, that word uh, loving is, you know, it's a little bit uh, blown out of proportion or it's really not uh, specifically this idea of love is, a, you know, uh, been misinterpreted. And so it's not necessary to call it, uh, you know, loving friendliness, but basically friendliness or boundless friendliness. Boundless friendliness is a, probably a more appropriate. Uh, that we don't limit our friendliness towards specific persons. Now, the ordinary person in our life, we limit our uh, friendliness to, you know, a certain circle of <laughs> friends, like our family, uh, uh, in some cases, <laughs> uh, and uh, others. But we, we don't extend that to, uh, you know, unfriendly persons, or just in generally, uh, you know, all living beings. I mean, maybe in a certain way we do people that are friendly, gen generally have a friendly temperament. But, uh, you know, we can be friendly towards person as long as they're uh, saying and doing the right things uh, uh, to us. 
when people start, uh, you know, pushing our buttons or starting uh, saying things or doing things that we don't like, then that friendliness can uh, kind of change. So metta is not based on the superficial the circumstances, but it's, that's why it's called the boundless, uh, uh, a boundless quality, boundless friendliness. It's not limited to just uh, a certain circle of uh, persons. And actually the word Brahma Vihara, so Metta is one of the Brahma Viharas. And Brahma Viharas, the word Vihara means dwelling with or a dwelling place. And Brahma, of course, from the, uh, Sanskrit, was a word for uh, God, or one of the you know, words for God, Brahma, or Maha Brahma. And so even in our you know, sort of Christian uh, conditioning, we, we uh, feel that God is this all compassionate uh, and uh, you know, being that uh, you know, loves everyone. So the, the, and loves everyone uh, equally. So the Brahma Viharas mean these mental states of uh, God-like dwelling. So this uh, state of being connected with uh, all beings. Normally each person, you know, they're, they're caught in their own little egos and world. And uh, in the whole, you know, most of people's lives revolve around just their, their own life or their, their families or just a small group of uh, people. And, uh, and they, you know, are there to protect uh, that certain group of people, whether it's a family or it's a, a group ideology, if you belong to a, a race, for example, or religious group, then you identify with those uh, groups. And, and then people outside of that group are, you know, considered to be perhaps antagonistic, or if they, if they are. So, uh, you know, we're caught in that, uh, that ego-centered uh, uh, kind of relationship. So the practice of the Brahma Viharas is to go beyond that ego bound, uh, the boundaries that the ego creates for itself. So the first boundary the ego creates around itself, and then it creates a boundary around uh, you know, the family or one's uh, relatives or friends and so on. And uh, then it, you know, keeps uh, expanding, but it's, at some point it's limited. So the Brahma Viharas are ways of breaking down that ego's uh, boundaries that the ego has created to basically to protect itself. And the whole practice of Dhamma is essentially a practice of uh, breaking down these boundaries because it's the boundaries that keep our mind in a kind of a prison and uh, keep the mind from, ex, ex, uh, from being able to experience its full range of potential. So the, uh, and you know, the practice of the Brahma Viharas also helps to overcome certain hindrances. So, you know, most of you and, you know, most people who are meditating these days are practicing, uh, you know, methods of concentration, methods of, of mindfulness. But the, you know, the, the hindrances are which block or prevent our mind from going deeper into meditation. So I think, uh, you know, most of you probably are familiar with these five hindrances. They are the hindrance of ill will, the hindrance of sensual desire, the, the uh, hindrance of restlessness and worry, 
the hindrance of uh, doubt and the hindrance of uh, uh, <laughs> sense, desire, and will, uh, restlessness, and worry, doubt, and of course, uh, sleep, uh, drowsiness, or tina and midda, mental or physical lethargy. So these hindrances block our ability to go deeper into meditation. So the practice of metta is the, the classical antidote for ill will. Now, ill will means thoughts that come up in your mind about certain persons that uh, you may not care for, certain persons that have irritated you or have caused you pain or suffering in one way or another, you know, could go back uh, many lifetimes uh, from the past to carry it over to the present. And then we even project that into uh, in the future. And uh, so, you know, certain persons uh, and, and these thoughts come up in your meditation and not maybe ill will only to individual persons would be ill will towards groups of persons, especially if they hold different views uh, to you. And whenever you hear uh, something about uh, another religion or people in other religions, these preconditioned ideas come into one's mind that uh, you know we get carried away in our thoughts about them. So the practice of metta is a way to help to uh, overcome the hindrance of ill will or resentment or you know anger and hatred all these things are kind of uh, related the first uh, ill will it starts with the irritation you get irritated by something that's disturbing you like even an itch right so you're meditating you get a strong itch and that irritates the mind and you want to get rid of that itch. Uh, and if the itch doesn't go away, then you know you'll you'll start getting more uh, tense about it. Or you know if it's an individual that starts uh, talking to you, you so you can have initial irritation, but if it doesn't get checked, then it develops into you know sort of resentment. And it turns into anger, and it could even turn into uh, hatred. So these are the way our emotions gradually, you know, uh, come into our mind. So the practice of metta is a way to try to help to uh, overcome that uh, evolution of the initial irritation into the stronger. Uh, emotions and hindrances of ill will, resentment, anger, or hatred. And it's basically, basically because of our, uh, you know, condition reaction to whatever these persons are doing to, to us or these uh, events are, are triggering off in us. So, and that will prevent any deeper meditation. So learning how to deal with the hindrances is an important part of uh, you know, deepening, our, deepening our meditation uh, practice. So, but again, metta has to come from a calm state of mind. And usually metta is practiced in a gradual development that one practice is metta to oneself first, because a lot of people have uh, ill will even towards themselves, maybe certain habits that you've been trying to overcome and you can't overcome them, or because of you, you did something unmindfully to somebody in the past and you're having you know, self blame about that. And uh, so self loathing, that, You've done a lot of uh, unskillful things in your past. But so first we have to develop a friendliness towards ourselves. So 
and uh, toward your body and mind. And so again, as I mentioned, metta is based on wisdom and understanding. That this body and mind is, is a conditioned process. And ultimately, we're not really the owner of our body and mind because the underlying wisdom of the Buddha is that everything is not self, that there's no owner or controller even towards our, these body and minds, that it's all been uh, gradually evolved and powered by the process of karma, by greed, hatred, and delusion, and ignorance. And at the best, we're just a manager of our body and mind. So in the practice of meditation, we have to have that understanding and have that gentle, uh, attitude toward our own body and mind, wishing that ourself could be uh, well, peaceful, and, and happy. And then, <clears throat> now the metta, in cultivating metta, normally there's a standard uh, phrases that are used. So may I be well, peaceful, and happy, or may I be free from ill will, and guilt, worry, remorse, and fear. Uh, and these uh, kind of friendly attitude. But uh, we have to understand why uh, we've gotten our mind caught up in these uh, negative states also. So anyway, it starts out by cultivating these thoughts for oneself but also generating, may I be uh, free from greed, hatred, and delusion? Because it's actually the accumulated greed, hatred, and delusion that we've been accumulating for such a long time that has got our mind caught in the web of karmic actions that then we will do unmindful and unskillful thought, speech, and actions that uh, cause our mind to uh, have this kind of self-loathing uh, or remorse about. So part of the metta is not just wishing the others to be well, happy, and peaceful, but wishing that others to be free from greed, hatred, and delusion because it's simply greed, hatred, and delusion that's made people that the way that they are. Uh, or the, the opposites of uh, non-greed, non-hatred, and, and wisdom. But, uh, you know, for most people, their minds are dominated by greed, hatred, and delusion. And this is the ultimate cause of their suffering. And, you know, people do things that irritate us or uh, harm us in one way or another because of their greed, hatred, and delusion. So to wish them to be free from greed, hatred, and delusion is really an act of, of metta. So rather than just wishing them to be well, happy, and peaceful, it's not going to do a lot unless they do something about overcoming the greed, hatred, and delusion. Uh, and also metta is not necessarily going to change others but metta helps to change ourself. So it's, it's in the other Brahma Vihara. So it's changing our attitude and relationship to others. And this idea of also like the golden rule is a, is a, a kind of a, a quality of the, the thoughts of metta or do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's a very uh, important sort of quality of metta. That uh, just as we would like others to have friendliness and you know best wishes toward ourselves, then we should have friendliness and best wishes towards others also. Because that's the only way that, you know, the Buddha said that hatred is only come, hatred is never overcome by hatred in the world, but only by uh, love is hatred overcome. So the 
again, all of that is sort of the basis for, you know, understanding this idea of uh, the development of, of metta. It, and in order for our medit again, it's for our meditation to deepen. Ultimately, we want to, you know, uh, make, you know, progress in the practice of meditation, which means making our mind more inwardly uh, calm, inwardly tranquil, and by being able to purify our mind of greed, hatred, and delusion, and to attain the, the states of liberation, becoming more weakening the, the confines and the and the boundaries of our uh, ego, uh, ego-centered thoughts. So that's all part of the, the practice of, or the path leading to the end of suffering uh, is, is this uh, path of you know, freeing the minds from the, the, the very intricate and sticky web of kamma and, and actions and reactions that we find ourselves in. So, and again, one of the, the hindrances of that is the, uh, is the ill will and resentment uh, that we have towards uh, you know, so many uh, things in the mind. But that is also related back to the ego. It's the ego, the boundaries of the ego that uh, keep our mind in that state of having resentment and ill will. So, the, uh, <clears throat> just a moment. Now, as I mentioned, uh, <clears throat> the, you know, the practice of metta needs to come from a more calm, peaceful place. So that <clears throat> first it's important to learn how to relax and kind of get connected, reconnected to one's body and breathing, because that's really where all of our mental states in the world is coming through our bodies and mind. And it's, it's very difficult to practice the metta if the mind is in a kind of a, a excited or agitated uh, state of mind. And also it needs some degree of concentration to effectively cultivate uh, these thoughts and feelings of metta. So this, uh, you know, the quality of metta is not just a a thought, but it is also a, a feeling of the body. It's like really getting connected to uh, the life force that's uh, in your body. It's like all the cells of your body, you know, they're having metta towards you. You know, they're trying to do things to uh, keep your body in a, a good state like all the different systems of our body, the circulation system, the metabolism, the immune system, and so on. You know, all this nature is, is created, this human body, uh, you know, to, to live our life. But we do a lot of things in our life that hurt this body or that help to uh, limit the uh, the, the, you know, the, the feeling and the health of our body and the mind. So to, to get in touch with that, the feelings of the body and the sensations and to, to do things that are also good for the body and mind is a, sort of a starting point for metta. Uh, so things like doing uh, deep breathing and even doing some 
uh, yoga exercise or some other types of exercise, the things that are good for the body, that is also a, a starting point of metta. You're doing something, you're having a friendliness toward your own body. Instead of feeding the body or with a lot of things that are harmful for it or not getting a proper exercise, and so on, you're doing things that uh, you know hurt the body or make the body more painful. So uh, even that, uh, you know, to sort of to get in touch with the body and to become centered and grounded uh, in this breathing body, that's that's sort of the starting point where you'll be able to really connect with uh, the metta and to be able to more genuinely. Uh, uh, cultivate these thoughts and feelings of friendliness and best wishes. So metta again, it's a, it's thoughts and feelings of friendliness and best wishes, having the best wishes in mind for one's uh, own body and mind, as well as for all these uh, categories of others that uh, we'll be mentioning. And as I mentioned, there are <clears throat> metas normally uh, radiated out uh, to these four classes of persons. The first one is to radiate metta to one's own body and mind. That means we try to see our body and mind as another person, not just me, 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 but you know, have compassion, just body and mind. You know, it, it's affected by so many things. Uh, and, you know, we just happen to be, be the, you know, sort of the tenant of this body and mind in this lifetime, uh, or the manager of it. But anyway, so it, if you don't have metta or friendliness towards oneself, towards one's own body and one's own mind, then it's very difficult to have friendliness towards others. And that's why metta is normally started towards oneself. When you feel good about oneself, then it's easier to feel good about others. And then the next type of person one radiates method out toward is uh, sort of a, a dear friend, uh, but normally not somebody, not a friend like a, a lover, not somebody that you're sort of uh, sexually intimate with or have uh, some uh, attachment like uh, that, because then that metta can become uh, a form of more attachment. So it's said to uh, to take somebody like a, a dear grandmother, or somebody you're not likely to have uh, some, you know, like intimate relationship, sexual relationship with, or be attracted to in one way or another like that. Uh, or a teacher that uh, you might have had in school. Uh, and so it's kind of a neutral person, but somebody who you have uh, some, you know, uh, respect for and, and so on, or that you kind of uh, like. And so you, you wish them to be well, happy and, and peaceful and so on. And then once you've cultivated that metta towards oneself, and then uh, like some you know, your relatives or some you know aunt or uncle or who, who used to give you you know gives you Christmas presents or <laughs> birthday presents and so on, uh, or somebody else, then you you keep ex expanding that to uh, even strangers. Uh, that you know, just anybody on the street by understanding that all people are suffering and all people are struggling and toiling to make ends meet in this world. And uh, also all these other people could have been your, one, your relation at one time or another. So uh, cultivating these uh, more, you know, it's going to a more uh, boundless direction starting with oneself then maybe uh, a dear person and strangers on the street. And then finally, even to ones, or not finally, but then to ones even uh, unfriendly persons, 
it's difficult to just start immediately practicing metta to somebody that's, that's sort of an enemy or unfriendly to you. Uh, so that's why we wait and extend metta to uh, them once we're able to cultivate the metta to ourselves and other uh, dear people or friends, then, uh, then the strangers, and then even the, by that time, you'll have more sympathy for even uh, our so-called enemies or unfriendly persons. And again, the whole, the underlying uh, reason behind that is that all these beings are conditioned. Nobody is ultimately evil in themselves. It's ignorance that has caused the world to become like it is. And we've all contributed to that ignorance as well even you know, from when we were younger or certainly even from the past lives that we've all contributed one way or another to the overall uh, soup of, collective soup of suffering, you might say, in, in the world. But, you know, we're trying to change, of course. Uh, but anyway, so this gradual development of uh, that metta. Now, <clears throat> we're going to be... Uh, doing a meditation practice uh, now and or shortly. And in this uh, first meditation, as I mentioned, first we want to uh, develop some initial uh, uh, centeredness or using the body and breathing to initially uh, relax and calm our uh, minds and kind of get in touch with the body in breathing and to, to again to develop that uh, more peaceful vibration within our body and mind and to really kind of get connected to the to the present moment now the reason why we have ill will and resentment towards others is because we're remembering uh, the past of, of what these people have done to us and uh, so that's usually what the mind is always doing. It's going to the past and uh, projecting those past memories onto the present and, and then into the future. So learning how to get grounded and centered in the present moment helps us to be able to uh, see more clearly these urges or these thoughts of resentment or ill will as they come up into uh, the mind. So we're going to spend the first part of this meditation learning how to just, uh, you know, develop our mindfulness of breathing and also getting relaxed in the body and uh, getting relaxed in both the, the body and with the breathing, with the breathing body. And then trying to become aware of any thoughts of ill will or resentment. Uh, that arise and <clears throat> you know the, the first ones are you know just the, the the painful or the irritating sensations that we have on the body like itches or biting sensations prickling sensations discomforts we have to develop a method towards those and uh, try to relax around them and understand that all these different sensations, these are also the cells and molecules of your body that are just uh, acting and interacting. And, and uh, many of them are not really that, uh, uh, you know, bad or dangerous or gonna hurt you in any other way. So we can have a, learn how to relax around them uh, so that they don't irritate the mind so much. So to develop a, a patience and a tolerance to the various type of sensations that come to our body. And then we're able to do that towards our thoughts also. And then from uh, the sitting meditation, we're gonna go and to do it standing and, and walking also. So the Buddha advised us to practice uh, the meditation, whether it's mindfulness meditation or even these uh, metta, uh, the Buddha advises to cultivate metta, you know, and 
in sitting, even in standing and walking uh, to cultivate this uh, kind of uh, friendly attitude toward our, our body and mind and being able to then uh, be able to detect the, that urge for uh, you know, irritation. First, it's an irritation. And then, uh, you know, that builds into, uh, you know, ill will and so on. But we have to see that in our mind as it comes up and learn how to relax around it. Okay. So, um, we're going to, uh, so where you are at home, if you have a, a seat, a comfortable seat for your meditation, You try to uh, sit straight. It's important to try to uh, keep your back and spine and the back of your head in a straight line because the meditation really happens through between the, the spinal column and our brain is really where uh, we, our mind functions and where we have cognition uh, of the world. So to be able to, to sit straight and relax is an important uh, part of, especially in the sitting meditation. So just try to sit straight, just place your hands somewhere where you can keep them without moving them, either one on top of the other in your lap or resting on your legs. And then just gently close your eyes and take a few deep, slow breaths. Try to take two or three seconds to slowly breathe in, expanding your rib cage and chest. Hold the air in your lungs for two or three seconds to allow the oxygen to get into the bloodstream and feel a relaxing contraction of the out breath. Try to feel the last bit of air go out of your lungs. Just take a few deep, slow breaths like that, cultivating this uh, train of thought. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out. Sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Breathing in, relaxing the body and mind. Breathing out, relaxing the body and mind. And now we're going to count the breaths from one to 10 to try to develop a more continuous mindfulness of the breathing. Actually, I'll do the counting for you. If you can, try to continue to take some deeper, slow breaths. And on the next expanding in breath, mentally count to one. Feel the pause or in the breath a second. With the contracting out breath, also count one. 
Let the last bit of air go out to the lung. The next in breath too. Out breath too. In breath three. Out breath three. In breath four. Out breath four. In breath five. Out breath five. In breath six. Out breath six. In breath seven. Out breath seven. In breath eight. Out breath eight. In breath nine. Out breath nine. In breath ten. Out breath ten. I will just continue the counting. Just let your breathing return to its uncontrolled or shorter, irregular rhythm. Just continue to feel it. Keep your attention focused on the movements of the abdomen, rib cage, your chest. Subtler expanding and contracting sensation. Just knowing when the breath is coming in. And knowing when the breath is going out. You know it by feeling. Or to have the attitude of a scientist looking down through a microscope to observe the inner breathing process. Let's try to notice the four phases of each breath. 
the expanding in breath and the brief pause, contracting out breath and the brief pause. You can make these brief mental rememberings to remind yourself in, in sitting, out, out, sitting. It's the ongoing continuous present moment of this breathing body. In, in, sitting, out, out, sitting. Let's try to notice how each breath is different. Sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Sometimes you feel it more in the abdomen, sometimes you feel it more in the rib cage or upper chest. It's always changing. In, in, sitting, out, out, sitting, Just cultivating that natural connection to the present moment, Just breathing bodies, the natural connection, the present moment awareness. Especially with each out breath, allowing the body and mind to relax more and more into the present moment. At the same time, be alert for thoughts sneaking up into the mind. Especially if there are any thoughts of irritation arising. Just let go of those any irritating thoughts. Just let the thoughts come and go in the back of the awareness. Just keep the breathing body in the front of the awareness. Breathing in, sitting. Breathing out, sitting.
is cultivating this understanding that this body lives by the life-giving oxygen and life force brought in with each incoming breath. And on the out breath, the body expels the toxins, the carbon dioxide, other blood impurities. It's a continual process of breathing in life-sustaining oxygen, breathing out the noxious carbon dioxide, other impurities. And that's nature's metta towards your own body, towards this body. It's cultivating this friendly, onlooking awareness to this breathing body. Try to just rest the attention behind your eyes. From that point behind the eyes, try to feel the outline of the sitting body. Let the breathing process there in the middle of that sitting body. It's called observing the body within the body. The breathing body within the larger sitting body. Be alert when painful body sensations arise, or any strong itches, or other body irritations. Start to observe them, relax around them. Just let them well up, come to a peak, a change. None of these sensations will really hurt you. You notice any tension in the body, relax. Tell the body to relax. Tell the mind to relax. Breathing in, sit and breathing out, sitting. Breath by breath, moment by moment.
Again, if any irritations into the mind, try to cultivate this metta if it's directed at some person. We add these thoughts of metta towards one's body and mind so with each out breath. With each out breath, cultivating these thoughts, yeah, be well, mindful, peaceful. The next out breath may be free from excessive attachments, aversions, ego-centered thoughts. Which is a source of my suffering. might reflect on your living and lifestyle, things you might have been doing that cause unnecessary pain or problems to your body or mind. And cultivating Motivation would be more friendly, kind to your own body and mind, avoiding unnecessary, unhealthy habits. Just as you would regard you know, one of your best friends, just regard your body and mind as 
your best friend, not wanting to cause it harm or additional problems. To contribute to its well-being and happiness. doing things that are good for it, eating good food, doing the proper type of exercise, deep breathing, cultivating wholesome thought. Practicing the right effort of abandoning unwholesome thought, speech, and action, cultivating wholesome thought, speech, and action. That's the way we cultivate metta to our own body and mind. Now, friends, take another deep, slow breath. Hold the air in the lungs two or three seconds. Feel the relaxing and contraction of the out breath. Now we're going to gradually transition from the sitting position to the standing position, do a short standing and then a walking awareness practice, keeping this attitude of friendliness toward our body and mind Just by moving mindfully. So just mindfully now stretch out your legs to relieve any discomfort and feel the changing sensations as you stretch out your legs. And still just keep the attention on the body. Flex your toes a few times. Just try to mentally feel the body, rest the attention behind the eyes. 
Try to feel the outline of the sitting body. And then slowly uh, stand up. I'm going to have to adjust the camera. So just come up to a standing position. Stand straight. Keep your attention feeling the body. Relax your arms at the sides. Just take a few deep, slow breaths. Cultivate this basic meta, mind, meta mindfulness. Breathing in, may I be well, peaceful, and happy. And breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, may I be free from irritation, ill will, resentment. Breathing out, standing here and now. Let's try to feel the subtle life force vibration in the body. Subtle a course of blood or any other inner body sensations. It's from nature's love for the body, nature's metta for the body, the cells keeping this body alive. Dear friends, now we're going to do a little session of walking. I'm just going to explain how to do the walking, which we may have done it before. But it's a way just to continue our present moment mindfulness and our uh, centeredness, awareness in the body. And then uh, once having explained that, because the 
I'm going to set up here uh, and then film that uh, the walking inside. But we try to coordinate the steps with the breathing. You might have learned the walking meditation in different ways, but try it in this way. It's compatible with what we're doing. So try to coordinate the steps with the breathing. You have to do it kind of very slowly. So try to have a pace in your room there, and then ten or twenty feet, maybe a straight line. You have a you're gonna have to turn. Uh, so on an in breath, you lift the foot off the floor and swing the foot forward. On the out breath, you gently press the foot to the floor and feel the upper body moving forward. And get in breath, lifting the foot, swinging forward. Out breath, press the foot to the floor, the upper body shift forward. And it just repeats itself, lifting, swinging, and pressing and shifting forward. You can use those mental notes to help you stay focused in the present moment. Stay Lifting, swinging forward, out breath, pressing, shifting forward, and just continue with that. Stay in that your primary focus of your attention, feeling the sensations of the feet as they lift up, swing forward, press the floor. Letting your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Just feel this walking body. It's a little bit wobbly. If you're walking too slowly, it's too wobbly. You can speed up a little bit. And just try to keep your attention on the walking process. Keep the rest of the body relaxed. When you get to a point where you have to turn and come to a, a full stop, pause for a moment, and then mindfully turn, feel the movements of the feet, turn the body 90 degrees, 180 degrees, walk in another direction. And just again, cultivating this compassionate attitude toward the body.
to come to a fuller stop. Stands, feel a standing body. And feel a peacefulness. You know, mindfully come back to your, your sitting position. friends. So now I want to do another an expansion of the uh, metta meditation. Hopefully that the glare uh, on the screen is not too, too disturbing, but uh, anyway, during the meditation you have your eyes closed. So we're going to do another sitting meditation to expand the thoughts of metta. So again, let's try to sit straight. Now again, begin some deep, slow breathing. And after breathing in, to hold the air in your lungs for several seconds, or as long as you comfortably can. And try to imagine that the oxygen from the lungs going into the bloodstream, being taken out to all the cells of the body, and charging up all the cells of the body with life-giving oxygen, life force. And on the out breath, feeling the, the body and mind relaxing into the present moment. And doing the deep, slow breathing like this is actually <clears throat> sending metta to your own body and mind. And cultivating the present moment, the awareness is for your mind. And the breathing is for the body. Just take some deep, slow breaths. Just feel the subtle exhilaration as you're holding the breath in, the oxygenated blood. On the out breath, relaxing the body and mind to the present moment. Just 
take several more deep, slow breaths like that, really charging the body up with oxygenated blood, making the body happy. Also the deep, slow breathing helps to create a very relaxing vibration within the whole nervous system. And add these thoughts along with the breathing. Continue that deep breathing for a little longer. Just thinking, may I be well, happy, and peaceful, free from excessive attachment and greed, anger, or hatred, jealousy, envy, fear, pride, and ignorance. May I be free from the pain, sorrow, and sufferings of body and mind brought about by such unskillful thought, speech, and action. May I have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. I'll be able to continue deep in my understanding of the Dhamma and the practice of meditation to help free the mind from confusion and suffering. May I be well, peaceful, and wise. Contemplate that for a few minutes. May I be well, peaceful, and wise. Now, ex extending these thought vibrations of metta further toward our family members, just thinking. May my mother and father, even if they've already passed away, there's some place in samsara. My brothers and sisters, grandparents, aunts and uncles, other relatives. May all of them be well, happy and peaceful, free from greed, hatred, fear and ignorance. Free from the pain, sorrow, and sufferings of body and mind brought about by such unskillful thought, speech, and actions. May all of them also have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. If they haven't already, may they also have the opportunity to hear the teachings of the Dhamma and to learn and practice meditation to help free their minds from confusion and suffering. May they be well, peaceful, and wise.
And if you want to pick one in particular dear person, focus in a more concentrated way on one person. You can do that, send them the thoughts of metta. May this person be well, happy, and peaceful, free from harm, anxiety, fear. May they be well and happy. Now re recollecting or spreading these thoughts of metta out further, just thinking, just kind of recollect all the friends that you had from your school days and neighbors when you've lived in different places since your childhood up to the present, all the teachers that you've had in school, schoolmates, friends, neighbors, just thinking may all of them be well, happy and peaceful, free from greed, hatred, fear and ignorance, free from self-created pains and sufferings of body and mind. treated by their unskillful thought, speech, and actions. May they also have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. And if they haven't already, may they also have the opportunity hear the teachings of the Dhamma, and to learn and practice meditation. We hope free their minds from confusion and suffering. May they be well, peaceful, and wise. Now extending these thought vibrations, friendliness, best wishes further afield. Just kind of recollect all the people you encounter every day, even in the present, the people in the various places, grocery stores, Uber Lyft drivers, Nurses and doctors in the hospital, any other service organizations, all the ordinary folks out there struggling to make ends meet, encountering all kinds of problems. Just thinking, may all of them be well, happy, and peaceful, free from greed, hatred, fear, and ignorance free from the pains and sufferings of body and mind brought about by such unskillful thought, speech, and actions. May they also have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. 
If they haven't already, may they also be able to hear the teachings of the Dhamma and to learn and practice meditation to help free their minds from confusion and suffering. May they be well, peaceful, and wise. Now extending these thoughts of friendliness, best wishes, and further afield, recollecting, thinking about all the rich, or famous, or powerful people in the world, politicians, the rulers of countries, have the fate of so many innocent people in their hands or even movie stars, singers, entertainers, other rich people also influence the world in many different ways, Just wishing that they also could be well, peaceful and wise, to be free from greed, hatred, fear and ignorance, free from the pains and sufferings of body and mind brought about by such unskillful thought, speech, and action. May they also have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to be able to make the right decisions affect the world at large. If they haven't already, may they also be able to hear the teachings of the Dhamma and to learn and practice meditation to help free their minds from confusion and suffering. May they be well, peaceful, and wise. And now we want to continue to extend these thought vibrations, metta, friendliness, best wishes, out across the whole country and world. Let's do that with combining it with the deep, slow breathing again. So let's try to do some more deep, slow breathing. As you're holding in the breath, as you let out the breath, just imagine these waves of meta vibrations going off in your body and mind. Just imagine these vibrations going out across the, the fields, the cities, through the towns and cities, countryside, gradually extending that from your own town outward, eventually cover the whole country. Just with each out breath, just like waves radiating from a radio tower, 
heat radiating from a, a wood stove. Just imagine these waves of warm, friendly met the vibrations, wafting outwards, going through the bodies and minds of all the people, even animals. Just quieting the mental agitation. Quieting their greed, hatred, and delusion, and awakening wisdom and love within their hearts. Just with the idea, may all living beings, wherever they might be, whether visible or invisible, living near or far, the strong or the weak, the rich or the poor. May all living beings be well, happy, and peaceful, free from greed, hatred, fear, and ignorance. May they be free from the pain, sorrow, and sufferings of body and mind brought about by their own unskillful thought, speech, and actions, and from their karmic interactions with others. And may all beings have the patience, strength, mindfulness, and wisdom to meet and overcome all difficulties in life. May all beings have the opportunity to hear the teachings of the Dhamma, to learn and practice meditation, to help free their minds from confusion and suffering. May they be well, peaceful, and wise. May they be well, peaceful, and wise. Just like a mantra reverberating throughout space. Well, peaceful, and wise. Very sit with that peaceful vibration in your body and mind.
I'm going to finish this uh, meditation by reciting what I call the Metta Mantra. You may not know it, it's in the Pali language, but I'll tell the English meaning afterwards. Dukkha Pata Chani Dukkha Bhaya Pata Chani Bhaya Sokha Pata Chani Sokha On to Sabi Pipa May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. In this way, may all beings live with mindfulness and wisdom. Thus spoke the Buddha. I invite you to chant the word sadhu three times. Uh, on, do the chanting on a long out breath. Take a deep breath. So friends so I hope hope that you were able to have a, a peaceful meditation and cultivate some genuine thought vibrations of, of metta <clears throat> now uh, coming up towards the my lunch time and uh, of course being a, a monk I have to uh, go and uh, some people have brought some dana to the, the center here so but I just want to uh, spend a few minutes uh, before that to uh, talk about the eating mindfulness or during the break. So now there's going to be a break until one o'clock. But uh, try not to see it as a break as such. But uh, you know whatever you know feelings of calmness or you know connection in the body or mind you might have gotten, try to keep that with you by, uh, you know, moving mindfully and just uh, any interactions that you might have with members of your household, try to keep this idea of friendliness and metta in mind, especially if you, you know, hear some sounds or see something that may be irritating, try to notice that, that irritation uh, you know, arise in the mind or maybe some ill will feelings and to, to immediately try to replace it with, you know, with that person or thing, be well and happy, free from suffering and understanding that, you know, that person is also just conditioned. They may say or do things unmindfully. So we should have uh, compassion and friendliness towards their, you know, 
their on mindfulness. But anyway, uh, during the eating, if you're going to have lunch or just maybe a snack or even just take tea or something, then uh, try to uh, do it, you know, with mindfulness. And if you can, try to avoid any, you know, any uh, interaction with others that may be or making phone calls or even checking the internet where you might, you, you know, just hear, see unwanted uh, things. So, uh, but when you're eating, uh, you know, try to again understand that this body exists on the food. And so just as the deep breathing is metta to your body, even what you're eating is also you're having metta to your body by hopefully consuming things that are healthy for the body, uh, not things that we just do out of taste because we like it, but it may not be that uh, healthy for us. And also metta for your mind by just keeping your, your mind more uh, peaceful, not letting it get uh, sort of... Uh, agitated or drawn out uh, into the past or the future, try to maintain that connection with the present moment. So if you're gonna drink a cup of tea or eat something, kind of just after putting something in your mouth, and instead of immediately swallowing or chewing, feel that, that food or nutrition uh, substance in your mouth, feel the sensations of it, be aware of the, the chewing. If you're going to chew something, do it slowly to feel the movement of your, your jaws and so on. And basically just try to be in the, remain in the present moment in that state of being peaceful and, and friendly to your own body and mind or to anything that may be happening uh, around you. And uh, so, and so just try to you know, do that during the lunch break. And then we'll meet back at about uh, one o'clock uh, for, uh, I'll be giving another Dhamma talk about uh, also how to integrate metta in with the other Brahma Viharas. And then uh, do some more meditation after that uh, until the end around for 4.30. Okay, do you have any uh, announcements or anything you'd like to say, uh, Bob? Thank you, Monte. I, I went ahead and put in the chat, folks, um, the program schedule for today uh, that Bonte mentioned. Uh, I think that's about it. Other than when we come back from our lunch break, we'll take a short period and Danica from our group will um, mention Donna and because uh, the retreat is based on Donna. Uh, exclusively. Uh, the to say oh, now it comes back on. Huh. I was going to turn it off once you stop talking, so it's not oh. recorded during the lunch break. Oh, that, that's fine. Yeah, I just thought maybe we had a problem there. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah, anybody else? Lois or John? Anika? Okay. Thank you, Bonte. Oh, you're welcome. We'll be back at one. Okay. <laughs>